While growing up, my parents were avid hikers, and almost every summer weekend, they would take my brother and I camping. Most often, we would explore the nearby and local mountains and parks. While hiking, my father has always pestered me to stop looking at my feet and look at the beautiful mountain landscape. But my father was oblivious to the beauty at our feet. Among all that beauty, I learned to love and search for the small but sweet and intensely flavorful berries of the hortleberry, also known as Vaccinium scoparium, whose common names are the grouse hortleberry, dwarf red hortleberry, little leaf huckleberry, and the red alpine blueberry. Vaccinium scoparium, which will be referred to as the hortleberry, often dominates the shrub understory layer of subalpine forests throughout the Rocky Mountains and Western States and Canada. It provides food and cover for many wildlife species. All plants are under the kingdom Plantae, which includes the species Vaccinium scoparium. The hortle berry forms large, dense colonies where the shrub grows 3 to 20 inches tall and the roots are moderately shallow. It reproduces through seed and rhizome sprouting and is capable of growing on soils with low fertility. The hortleberry flowers in early to mid-summer and the fruit is ripe in late summer to fall. The hortleberry grows in lodgepole pine, spruce, fir, and mountain hemlock forests, which provide good summer range for many species throughout much of the west. The shrub is eaten by large animals such as elk, mule deer, moose, and goats. Bears also rely heavily on the hortleberry. The berries are a valuable food source for many birds and small mammals, from chipmunks, red squirrel, fox, skunk, grouse, ptarmigan, and bluebirds. The hortleberry foliage is high in carotene and energy content and has a fair amount of protein. Fruits of the hortleberry are edible, though small and difficult to gather in quantity. The fruit is sweet and contains high concentrations of monosaccharides and disaccharides, and it is high in vitamin C. Berries may be eaten fresh, cooked, or made into jam and wine. The berry was an important traditional food for many Native American peoples. They used the plant for not only food, but its medical uses. The leaves have been used as tea in the treatment of nausea and to increase the appetite. The fruits have been given to children to improve their appetite. The branches are also made into brooms. A Prospects for Domesticating Western Huckleberries study by Danny Barney showed that cultivation of the genus Vaccinium was difficult, but some species showed better results than others. A research project performed in the Wind River Mountains in Wyoming studied the impacts of camping on vegetation. The study illustrated that low levels of leave-no-trace camping and without fires can cause substantial vegetation loss. In the forested areas where Vaccinium scoparium is the most common low-lying cover ground, degradation was extensive, especially compared to meadows that had been camped on. In February of 2012, I went on a yurt trip in the Medicine Bow National Forest. On our ski inn, I spotted Vaccinium scoparium, barely poking out from the snow of the trail bank. My previous experiences with the hortleberry has always been during the summers, so observing it in the winter took on a new form. The plant's leaves were no longer attached, but had fallen to the ground brown and shriveled. Although it is in the middle of winter, the stems of the hortleberry were still green with life. Sitting in a quiet forest is so peaceful, and the hortleberry sits there with open hands. A plant that only gives and does no harm.
The Vaccinium scoparium is closely related to 450 other species within its genus. The most commonly recognized Vaccinium are blueberries and cranberries. These berries are known to have excellent antioxidant properties and is recognized as a good source of flavonoids. These fruits are in many health supplements and beauty products for their health properties to fight against cancer, cardiovascular disease, and other age-related conditions. Because the species within the genus Vaccinium are highly prized for their anti-aging properties, and because there is such a high demand for staying young or fighting cancer, that a highly concentrated form of the antioxidants could evolve or be produced to better fight or even turn back the clocks of aging. The extraordinary powers of the vaccinium not only are beneficial to humans but are sure to have the same effects on other animals and the ecology of surrounding plants and soils. A plant so small has such a great impact not only on my taste buds but for the survival of an abundance of animals and the stability of western forests. Thank you.